We're back for another exciting discussion on This Is Your Life. This is your life. <clears throat> We've talked about three things in recent videos. Number one, karma. That this uh, karma can be accumulated. It is a kind of currency in the afterlife. And there is a negative karma, bad karma, and there's good karma, positive karma. At the end of your life, you want a good karmic score. That gives you a choice on what happens afterwards. Which is what we're going to talk about today. But before we do that, let's review the second part. That's part one, karma part two is the incarnation contract. Every, as far as I understand, having spent time in the afterlife and having a good memory of what happens and what takes place and having visited that dimension afterwards, because I can't take a video camera there, as far as I understand, and this is a good point to say something, that the, the things I share in the videos is not written in stone. This is not the biblical version of, a, of knowledge. The things I share are the things I understand, and the, the idea is you take things from the, these discussions that make sense to you, that resonate with you, that you feel are true, and you adapt them into your life. Adopt them, adapt them. You, you, you make improvements in, to your life from those new ideas. And the ideas that don't resonate with you, the, the ideas that don't jive, that you don't like, you don't use them. So, it's not to accept everything I say as gospel, which is the biblical way of thinking. That's not my way of thinking. My way of thinking is, this is my knowledge, this is my experience, this is my research. I think there's something good here. A lot of it's benefited my life. Maybe some of it can benefit your life, or your family, or your children, or whoever. So, I don't often say this in each video, but I think, I hope that people understand this is not written in stone. It's very difficult to find scientific evidence for some of these discussions, but we have to have these discussions. By the same token, don't accept everything I say as 100% true. I do make mistakes with knowledge. I don't see everything perfect. I don't understand everything perfectly. I think in general, I have a good understanding and my fundamentals are accurate. So the fundamentally, there is an afterlife. The shape and texture of it, maybe that I didn't get perfect. But the only way to get a perfect view of the afterlife is to kill yourself, go over there, and then come back with the video camera. It's just not going to happen. We have to be realistic. When I talk about Stellan cultures, interstellar cultures, I can't show you a picture of a lion-faced woman. I would love to show you a picture of a lion-faced woman, but there are, there are certain rules that prevent me from showing those pictures. So I can't show you. When there's a disclosure, those you will see that I've been talking about a lion-faced woman and after the post-disclosure, you will see a lion-faced woman. And then you will know that I was telling you the truth. I just didn't have the picture. So we have to work with what we have. Now, when we talk about the afterlife, this is very important extremely important and I speak from it uh, not from a spiritual angle I don't speak from it 
I don't speak about it from a religious angle. I speak from a technological angle. And we'll get into this in future videos of the computer generated reality. Today, <laughs> now let's go back. Today we want to talk about the afterlife. We want to incorporate karma. We want to incorporate the incarnation contract. Every human being, there are exceptions. I'm sure there are exceptions. There are exceptional people here uh, living a secret life they may have a special contract. Uh, every human being has a, an incarnation contract. Now, just like in life, some people have a long, complicated contract, some people have a very simple contract. It depends on all of your reincarnation factors. And yes, the, these videos assume that reincarnation is real, even though science has not proven it. In, in, in my view, from my experience, reincarnation is a fact. It's, it's a fact. It's a logical fact. And it's been discussed, if you look at Hinduism and Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism, if you look at uh, ancient Egyptian uh, mysticism, they all believed in the afterlife and reincarnation. So these are going back thousands and thousands of years. And these guys were pretty smart. So you have the contract. So you have the karma, you have the contract, and we have the, the fundamental piece is that Earth is a school. A school you come to learn. You don't come to a school to learn everything. That's one of the issues, I think, with, with the modern society is that people have been uh, programmed to think that they have to learn everything. I have to do this, and 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 that looks cool, and that looks cool, and that looks cool. You're not just happy being a, 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 a famous singer, you gotta be a famous singer, you gotta be a famous model, you gotta be a famous uh, actor. You gotta be a producer, a director, a dancer, a TV show host, start your own TV channel, get your own product line, get your own water line, you know. Uh, some people may do that. Some people may do that, but not everybody has to do that. If everybody's jumping off the cliff, you don't have to jump off the cliff. If your neighbor's beating his wife, you don't have to beat your wife. Don't do what everybody does. Okay. Earth is a school. You need to graduate. You need to graduate. You come here for a very specific reason according to the contract. So you have karma. You have a contract. And you have a school. Now, why this place has become a prison or feels like a prison? There are several reasons. One is, it has become a rebirth prison. Such that you damage your karma, you don't fulfill your contractual obligations, you don't graduate, you have to come back. You see the prison? You damage your karma, you don't fulfill your contractual obligations, you fail school. Right? You have to come back. It's called reincarnation. Come back to the same grade. Grade 7. How many times have you been here grade 7, Charlie? Oh, 400 times. Are you going to get it right this time? Um... I have to be famous, I have to be rich, I have to be beautiful, and um, I have to write a very good book, and I have to be very um, smart. Charlie? What's in your contract, Charlie? <laughs> That's what you gotta do. 
whatever's in your contract. So this has become a rebirth prison. Because when you come here, everything is designed to damage your karma. You fall into temptation, you do bad things, you're sinful, you hurt people, you support violence, we, we vote in corrupt politicians, right? We fight for corrupt politicians expecting that they're going to bring us positive results. So you damage your karma and then because of all the distractions and all the messages and all the media messages are telling you what to do, who to act, how to act like, who's your role model, what's your identity, you don't fulfill your contractual obligations because your contractual obligations you have to under, you have to know yourself. And if you spend your whole life avoiding yourself, you don't know yourself, you don't know your your what's on your contract. Now, if everybody thinks I got to be a famous singer that's in my contract, well, that doesn't make sense. Everybody wouldn't have that in their contract. Not everybody has to be a rich there's nothing wrong with living a, a mediocre life. There, if, if that's what you came here to learn. If that's, what, if that's what you came here to live as a mediocre life, raising a family, having a stable job, there's nothing wrong with that because that's what you came here. That's why you came here. And everybody, everyone didn't come here to be rich and famous. By the same token, some people think Life is, an, life is an accident. They don't know why they're here. And that's why the, pe the media tells you why you're here. You need to do this. You need to do that. This is how you dress. This is how you think. This is where you should be. Your life is not an accident. Your life is, there's a reason, there's a purpose. Everybody has a purpose. Some purposes are bigger than others. The other problem is, the, the reality hijackers, as I like to call them, they change things in the reality so that we don't graduate. They reprogrammed aspects of the reality so we don't graduate. For example, they cut off the connection between us and our contract. It used to be that there's a function there's a feature you can connect to your contract or you'd have some kind of uh, spirit guide or you'd have some kind of um, psychic intuitive medium who would specialize in contracts so you'd have these different levels that could point out what is your purpose now now some a lot of people are living their purpose right now and that might be your contract. You might be an accountant and that's your contractual obligation is to be an accountant. You might already be living your contract. You just maybe don't know it for sure. And there may be other things in there that you haven't done yet. <clears throat> so the reality hijackers, they cut us off from that uh, incarnation contract but what remained was purpose. So you see, my level is a bit higher. When I talk about incarnation contract, that's a much higher understanding. But what remained, what they couldn't block was purpose. So what's your purpose? Who are you? Why am I here? So that, that low level information remained. And that's all we've had. We should have the higher level. And maybe that's what I'm trying to reconnect. That the higher level exists. It exists. But we need, we need to reconnect purpose to contract, contractual obligation. And there are people who are psychics who are working for the reality hijackers. They're there to disinform you. They may, they may say, well, I know contracts. And they may... Uh, deceive you and then you get discouraged and you may not believe in contracts anymore so you do have to be careful 
it's going to take some time before we can establish that link. Okay, so you're talk in the, we're in this rebirth prison. Uh, the reality hijackers, they've reprogrammed aspects of reality to prevent us from understanding it's a school. Not everybody knows Earth is a school. You still have to, you have to educate people that Earth is a school. It's a very advanced school. It's a very uh, eloquent, uh, comprehensive habitat. But it is a school. And they, the reality hijackers also closed off some portals. There are, in a manufactured reality, in a synthetic reality, there are portals. You can open a portal and you can go through a portal and access information about yourself. Right? So they closed off those portals. So it used to be, it used to be, let's say, a, a, a particular psychic intuitive could take a group of people and we go through a portal and in that portal we all gain a realization of our purpose, our contracts, and information about ourselves. And then we come back through the portal and then we are more enlightened. Now the people who can do that maybe are, they're all alcoholics or drug addicts those portals have been closed off they may have shut off certain genetic functions in the human being human beings also have a genetic function to tap into reality to tap into who they are and those may have been shut off and it can be it can be as simple as uh, injecting formaldehyde and mercury and aluminum into the body which can interfere with the genetic processing and so you have this the reality hijackers have interfered with these different aspects of gaining this awareness this knowledge this enlightenment these certain spiritual uh, techniques that are no longer available that religion religion has blocked out now there's another thing that's happened is that it used to be that a if a wise person or a person with knowledge if they went into the afterlife they would become some kind of spirit guide uh, they would become some kind of uh, uh, available sage like a sage that you could communicate with between dimensions, right? Like like a ghost whisperer. You can call the this particular person and ask them questions because they have so much knowledge or they saw some things that most people can't see. We used to have those people, but what the reality hijackers have done, the magicians, is they've sequestered these people. They've sequestered, what I say, they've sequestered the dead. So that when, a, when a, an important person dies, they are sequestered, they are taken somewhere else, and they're no longer accessible. And I saw this with Neil Armstrong. Now, I've spoken to ghosts, I've spoken to the dead. It's not something I like to do, but I have done it. When Neil Armstrong died, the day Neil Armstrong died was a couple of years ago, maybe uh, three years ago. I went to speak to Neil Armstrong and I asked him, did you land on the moon? He said no. And he got very upset. He started crying. And then he went away and then he came back this is his spirit. His spirit. I asked his spirit, did you land on the moon? He says, no. He was very upset about it. He started crying. And then he left. And then they took him. The, the people on the other side, they took him and he's gone. So I only had that, that brief moment between his death and be, when he was taken. So... 
this is another problem. This is another one of the issues. Because if you want to find out what happened on the moon, and you want to talk to Neil Armstrong's ghost, or his spirit, that you can't access him. They've sequestered him. I did manage, although I can't prove it, but I'm pretty certain, I'm, the question I asked him was very straightforward, and it happened on the day of his death. What he said was he did not land on the moon. If the images of Neil Armstrong landing on the moon are the images on video and supports NASA's claim. If those, if he did not land on the moon, then where did he land? Now imagine if we had access to other people and we could ask them questions. What's the meaning of life? What happens after death? Um, what's what's really happening? You know, with the 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 did extraterrestrials come here and when? If we had access to all of these people, we would be a more enlightened society. But they don't want that. They don't want you talking to Neil Armstrong's spirit. And who am I? So that's why I call it the, the rebirth prison. We're living in so much ignorance that when we die, we basically have to come back. And we've been coming back so many times that some of us here are called old souls. Some of us here, they know, we, some of us here, we know, we don't want to come back anymore. We've had enough. You're probably this person. I don't want to come back again. And that means you are doing everything you have to do, right? You, you are changing your life in order to finish your contractual obligation. If that means picking up a microphone, if that means making videos, writing books, because you now know the truth and you don't want to come back. And that's what motivates some of these people They've been back so many times. I don't want to come back. I will do whatever I have to do. I will change my life. I will talk about aliens. Because I know. I know the value of it. The value is I don't come back. I get to graduate. And the people who don't understand that, they don't want to make the life change. The people who understand that are making the life change. And if you stick to your life change, you will graduate. And it might mean some big changes. It might mean major changes. And you have to keep making those changes. Okay, that's enough. Bye.